JT Masit with Cara Remix Concrete Association or CRMCA. I'm here to talk about the procedures involved in the Concrete Field Testing Technician Grade 1 certification for ACI. It's time to talk about the most fun procedure that everybody loves. In Colorado, most technicians don't perform the volumetric meter or also known as the roller meter. Uh, it is used more often on lightweight concrete but can be used on any type concrete. ASTM C-173 is the test method that determines air content based on volume, measuring air contained in the mortar fraction of the concrete. It is not affected by air present inside porous aggregates, therefore can be used on lightweight, standard weight, or heavyweight concrete mixtures. As always, let me remind you that I run a lot of ACI certifications here in Colorado and that get asked which videos to watch or what trainings to utilize. And understand these don't replace your, your training uh, through your company, but with these videos, make sure that they are up to date. So with that said, is this one too? As always, make sure you have the appropriate equipment, including the vessel and all of its accompanied equipment, a mallet, scoop, extra water, and enough alcohol. Dampen the interior of the measuring bowl. Fill the bowl in two equal lifts, starting with filling it half of the volume. Rod the layer 25 times, making sure to rod the entire cross section, not striking forcefully or damaging the bottom, but still rotting the full depth of the lift. Tap all the sides of the bowl smartly 10 to 15 times to close air voids caused by the tamping rod. Add the second layer, avoiding overfilling. Rod the layer 25 times, again across the full cross section, making sure to penetrate into the first layer about one inch. Do not add additional material during consolidation. Tap all the sides 10 to 15 times, releasing the air voids. After final consolidation, about 1 8 inch of concrete above the rim of the bowl is acceptable. Add or remove a representative amount of concrete as needed. Strike off the excess concrete using a strike off bar until smooth, not overworking the surface. The procedure does not specify the method, though we recommend a sawing motion starting from one end of the pot. Wipe the flange and rim clean. Remember, this rim is wider than your standard Type B pressure meter. Wet the inside of the top section, including the gasket, making sure no excess debris is lodged in the sealing surface. Place onto the flange of the pot and clamp down to create a tight seal. When tightening, a good starting point for this type of roller meter is setting the clamps at a 45 degree angle. Once a tight seal is created, insert the funnel and add at least one pint of water. If you spill a little, add a little. Then add the predetermined amount of alcohol. This amount is usually provided with the mix design when a lightweight or porous aggregate is used in the mix. If unknown, start with at least two pints of alcohol. Record the amount used. Continue filling the meter with additional water until it appears in the neck. It will normally take at least one-third to one-half a gallon of water before being near full. Once the water level is in view, the funnel can be removed. Adjust the water level up or down until the bottom of the meniscus is at the zero mark at the top of the window. Remember, the graduations on the neck increase downward. Attach and tighten the cap, creating a watertight seal. At this time, check for any leaks around the rim and clamps. Now, quickly invert the meter upside down, shake horizontally side to side, and then return to the upright position. Do this for at least 45 seconds, keeping inverted for no more than 5 seconds at a time. Do not rotate shake vertically or at an angle as this may lodge aggregate in the neck causing higher than true readings. Don't shake when in the upright position either as this is allowing the aggregate to roll out of the neck. 
Only keep upright long enough to allow aggregate to drop from the neck, then continue the inversion process. Listen for the aggregate in the meter. Set the meter down and immediately place one hand on the neck and the other on the flange near the clamps. Tilting the meter at a 45 degree angle, roll it vigorously one quarter to one half turn back and forth, quickly starting and stopping. Rotate the meter one third turn a few times while repeating the rolling process for a total of about one minute again listening for the aggregate loosening. Set the meter upright and loosen or remove the cap to release the pressure in the meter. Removing the cap will allow more light into the neck. Allow the water to stabilize for a two minute period. If the water doesn't stabilize within a six minute period, discard the test and start over with more alcohol. If the water is not seen in the neck, more than 9% of air is in the mix and calibrated cups are needed to bring the water level into view of the neck. Each calibrated cup of water is equal to one whole percent of air in the meter. Add calibrated cups of water until you see water in the neck. Always use full cups, keep track of how many, and add an extra full calibrated cup just in case. If there is more than 2% of foam seen in the neck above the waterline, Discard the test and restart with more alcohol. Once stable, read the level to the nearest 0.25% at the bottom of the meniscus. Record this as your initial reading. Your initial reading is the base reading which the subsequent air content readings are compared with. Retighten the cap and repeat the rolling process. Roll for one quarter to one half turn rotating one third turn a few times for about a minute. After rolling, set the meter upright again, loosen or remove the cap, and let the water stabilize again. Read the water level at the bottom of the meniscus to the nearest 0.25%. If this second reading hasn't changed by more than 0.25% from the initial reading, record this as your final reading. If this second reading differs by more than 0.25% from the initial reading. This becomes your new initial reading, and a third rolling process is needed. If this third reading is within 0.25% of the second reading, your new initial reading, then record this as your final reading. If not, then discard and restart with more alcohol. Remember, the process is shake, roll, read, roll, and read. You only need that additional roll if the meter is reading more than a quarter percent from the previous. That first reading is your initial and that second reading is your verification that you shook all that air out. Once you have your final reading, either after the second or third rolling process, disassemble the meter, pouring the excess liquid out and removing the top section from the bowl. Dump the contents of the bowl and examine the interior for undisturbed and unwashed concrete. If present, the test is invalid and another test must be performed. If you see washed aggregate compressed in the corner of the bowl, this does not necessarily mean the test is invalid. Look for the gray matter, cement coated aggregate, or cement lumps. At the end of this test, you will know the final reading, the amount of pints of alcohol used in the test, and the number of calibrated cups of water used. Using Table 1 from the ASTM C173 standard, find the correction for the alcohol used. Then calculate the reported air content by subtracting the alcohol correction and adding the number of calibrated cups from the final reading. Report the air content to the nearest 1 quarter percent or 0.25 percent. If you have any questions, or comments, please email us at aci at coloradocaa.org and we'll do our damnedest to answer your questions and help you out as best we can.